My name is Jay Berman. I am a, a registered dietitian and personal trainer um, here in San Francisco. I work actually just down the block at a club called the Bay Club. Um, and I've worked with Attuned on and off for several years, just doing um, media work. And um, Annalise and I have this weird, we met each other a long time ago when she was working for another company, so we just keep coming back together. Um, but I just love so much what the company stands for and how it talks about getting, you know, developing a closer relationship with your food and really understanding like, what you're putting in your body and how that can affect you. And from a nutrition standpoint, I obviously am obsessed with that. I just wanted to kind of bring up with breakfast is, is that breakfast truly is the most important meal of the day and many people, um, don't eat that. Don't eat breakfast regularly. I have a hunch probably you all eat breakfast regularly, considering you're here at eight thirty on a Saturday for a breakfast happy hour. But um, the majority of people who come to meet me, you know, oftentimes their first meal is 12, 1, 2 p.m. And they do that for a few reasons. First of all, they wake up not hungry, and so they the idea of eating, which maybe some of you can remember, is kind of hard. If any of you used to not be breakfast eaters, I know in high school I would it would make me sick to eat breakfast. Um, and also, many people think that they're being good from a weight loss perspective. Like, I'm going to save my calories until later, you know, so that I can, you know, eat more later and not waste those calories on a whatever in the morning when I'm not even hungry. But that is absolutely the um, incorrect way of thinking from a weight loss perspective, but also from a physiological perspective. So the body will only... It's not just burn fat or lose weight, but also just live well. I mean, it really is the same concept if it thinks that it is not in trouble. And the one way to let your body know that it is safe and that it is not in trouble is if you fuel it. So if the body thinks that it's stressed, if the body thinks that there's a problem, it's going to hold on to every last thing it's got. So you could go from beautiful San Francisco, Transamerica building, it's for some of you who've never been to the ferry building, I mean it's like truly heaven on earth, but you could be moseying around the ferry building today and your body thinks it's starving in the desert and in serious trouble. And as all of us who are women, um, and if you're premenopausal, your body is like, my key priority is for you to have a baby, so I'm going to hold on to every single thing that it can so that a baby can one day live so you can procreate. Now, that might not be a priority for any of us in the room, but our bodies, that is the goal of our bodies. And it's really important to remember that you might want to look good in jeans, you might want to be able to run fast, you might want to be able to do all these things, but this body has a purpose, and it's trying just to keep you alive. It's always trying to get out of the uh, stress syndrome. Like, did any of you see that movie, um, 127 Hours, or hear that story of that man in Utah? Your body is constantly trying to keep you safe in that situation. Now, hopefully none of us will be stuck, you know, in a crevice in Utah and have to cut our arms off with a pen, but your body is prepared for that, even though that's not even on your radar. And so it's really important to remember that you're constantly... Your body's trying to make sure you're not stressed while you're going about your everyday living your life. So breakfast is the number one way to lower those stress hormones because every single one of us wakes up, no matter how healthy we are, no matter what our weight is, starving in that desert in Utah. All of us do. Because we've gone more than four hours without eating. So your body can only hold on to about four hours of sugar, glucose in your liver. And after those four hours are depleted, your body goes into this, you know, mini stressed state. And a few things happen. Your metabolism slows down. So right now, all of us are burning calories because we just ate breakfast. But if one of you didn't eat breakfast, you would be burning less calories than the other people at this table. So you actually are burning because your calories, if you're in a stress state, the body doesn't want to burn anything it wants to hold on. You hold on to fat, and you especially hold on to fat in your stomach because that's where your organs are, and your body's going to want to hold, keep extra padding there. So just in case the lion comes out and bites you, it may not get to your liver as quickly if there's some extra padding here. Again, not a priority for any of us, but that's how the body's working. Um, your brain lives off sugar, so 
if you have run out of sugar stores in your brain, your ability to multitask is subpar. So those of us, especially women who are master multitaskers at 3 p.m., if you haven't eaten throughout the day and you've got 10 things to do, you're not going to do them as productively without that food. So eating every three to four hours is key. And the next, so eating within an hour of waking, I should say, to spark that, um, to lower your stress hormones right away. And then throughout the day is key. So a huge part of my job all day long is scheduling people's lives. <laughs> so going through their schedule, finding out what time they wake up, finding out what time they go to bed, and figuring out when are you going to eat in there. And if you have a job where you have meetings all day long, and sometimes people have jobs in meetings where it's a company policy, you cannot eat in that meeting. Okay, well, when are we going to, like, I mean, I've literally told people, like, you need to go to the bathroom, and you need to eat a bar, and you need to come out. Like, I don't care if it takes three minutes, but you have to get food in you if you're not going to be able to have a meeting, have any snack time. Um, so getting the body in that state where the stress hormones can lower so the body can burn fat. And from a deeper level, it's quite an important thing that every three to four hours, you check in with your body using food to say, everything's okay, we're good, burn a little fat for me if you don't mind, and I'll be back in three to four hours, there's nothing to stress out about. So it can be a very powerful um, mental thing to do to your body to make sure that it's doing exactly what you want it to do. Because so often we don't work, we don't actually communicate with our body and give our body what it needs, so we're not actually on the same page. So we're frustrated that we can't run as fast, we're frustrated that we can't sleep, we're frustrated that we feel bloated, but we're not giving our body what it needs to make it work the way it wants to work. And that's a really powerful tool. Um, so kind of from a scheduling standpoint, and this ties in with some of your questions, is eating within an hour of waking and then every three to four hours thereafter, and always trying to get on top of that. From a food perspective, once you've got your schedule down, this ties into the next point, is I recommend, even though there's no research to support this, that you eat a protein and a carb at every meal. So um, that's, that's where I kind of nitpick a little bit with my Weight Watchers clients, keeping with the points, but then making sure that it's not just about the points at the end of the day, but it's about how many pro percent protein you're eating within a day. And that's where a lot of people falter, right? So okay. an apple for a snack, in my opinion, is not a snack. It has to be paired with peanut butter or low-fat cheese or deli turkey or nuts or whatever you want. But some sort of protein source so that there's a protein <coughs> and a carb. And it goes back to the same concept. You have to give your body everything it needs when you eat so that it's okay. Because if you just give it carbohydrates, sugar, the body says, thanks, my brain needs that, my liver needs that, my eyes need that. There's a lot that I can do with that sugar, but I have enzo enzymes I need to produce, I have hormones I need to produce, I have muscle I want to build, muscle I want to recover, that is proteins needed for that. So you always want to give your body these mini balanced meals. And in the American diet, we often fall short of that. We always usually go to a carbohydrate for a snack, or if you're on like, you know, these Atkins or diet plans, you just are eating like eight pieces of turkey. And I'm like, that's great, but I'd really love a slice of bread with that too. So that's where combining those mini balanced meals can really be effective.